Welcome to Busted Speakers, I'm Cam. And I'm Alex. And today we're reviewing Brother Sister, the new album by Watkins Family Hour. So Sean and Sarah Watkins are two members of a very influential and acclaimed bluegrass trio called Nickel Creek. Um, Nickel Creek debuted in, actually all the way back in the early 90s when they were all still teens and preteens. So back in 2002... Um, Sean and Sarah took up a, a monthly residency at a music venue in California that they called the Watkins Family Hour. And over the years, they built up kind of a roster of supporting musicians. And in 2015, they decided to record an album that was entirely um, covers. They had Bob Dylan and some Fleetwood Mac, everybody you could think of. And they even had guest vocals from Fiona Apple on one track. Um, I have been a huge fan of Nickel Creek ever since high school. Lucked into finding um, their self-titled album at my town's library, and I've just been obsessed with them ever since. I try to like get everything, every album that any of the members have released or that they've ever been involved with. I just think that they are three of the most supremely talented musicians working today. I love um, all of their voices. So when I found the first Watkins Family Hour album, you know, obviously that was no exception. I bought it immediately without thinking. And when I saw a couple weeks ago that this album was coming out, um, I jumped right on it. I knew it had to be one that we were going to review because I knew that I was going to love it. And thankfully, it doesn't disappoint. Um, this one was recorded with a completely different group of musicians from the first one. And obviously the title Brother Sister puts an emphasis on the interplay between um, Sean's guitar and Sarah's fiddle and their voices, which have always gone together really well, and they still do on this album. Alex, I'm pretty sure you had no experience um, with Nickel Creek before I started crowing about them years ago, so uh, what do you have to say here? Well, yeah, you have recommended a couple songs, and they are all excellent, and I do plan on checking out their main album era, which is like the early 2000s stuff, right? Yep. All that stuff I'm definitely high on my want list although this, they're probably not really easy to find in the uk but i'm willing to export for greatness this album is i feel like is more the same with sarah and sean watkins you know two-thirds of nickel creek you know it's much of the same but the same is good like you say they've been playing since the early 90s at this point they're so good and so experienced i think they're quite incapable of making bad music like they're just really good yeah, and that's like that's what makes this really hard to talk about because if you know what they're like as musicians and songwriters, then you know what you're getting into. And, you know, there's like differences in quality between all of their albums, both with Nickel Creek and their solo and side projects. But there's kind of like just a base level of quality that you can expect from them because that's what they always deliver. Yeah, and that's a a good thing to be honest because if you know what you like you're definitely going to get from these people i'd say on a surface level overview of the entire project we'll get into some more specifics later i'd say their voices mesh together really well there are some songs where you know uh, sarah takes the lead or somewhere sean takes the lead but in general in all the songs other than a few instrumentals which are really good anyway because they're really good on guitars their voices harmonize really well together and they're just really good vocally then i think it's sean on finger picked acoustic guitar right yeah. and then like sarah on the fiddle is amazing she's not only just good at it she's really versatile on it for example on fake bad real gun she plays it like a staccato like dramatic way and it adds a lot of drama to that song, but also she has a lot of, like, melodic wistfulness in others. She's just a really excellent fiddle player, I'd say. Yeah, and that's always been one of my favorite things about all three of them, Sean and Sarah and then Chris Thiele, the mandolinist from Nickel Creek, is that you know they just know how to use their instruments in such unique ways. Like, I don't want to say that like other musicians aren't talented, but it's like you can tell that there's a difference between when the music is written by, like, you know, a pop artist or a producer and just given to a session musician than when it's, like, actually written by people who have enough talent to be able to say, let's do something a little bit weird and different because they know what their instruments are capable of and they know what they themselves can play. Yeah, I feel like she plays with feeling a lot of the time. 
There's a lot of uh, melodic ideas that she does here, which are all really good. The song Just Another Reason, I'd say is actually maybe the catchiest song here. Slight single potential. I don't know if they really got much airplay or if there's much uh, hope of a song becoming a hit from them, but I love that song. I think it, they trade off vocals in a Fleetwood Mac-esque way on uh, Just Another Reason. You did say that on the first album they did cover a Fleetwood Mac song, so they're at least somewhat uh, influenced or inspired by that band a bit, even though their music is quite different in general. Yeah, I think it was a, F- a Fleetwood Mac song. I know that Lindsey Buckingham had a composer credit on that one, so I assume it was a Fleetwood Mac. Or I guess it could be a Buckingham solo track. There are quite yeah, a few Buckingham of those. Mix or something. <laughs> and he also does a lot of uh, finger-picked guitar stuff, so they probably identify with him quite a bit. Yeah, just another reason is definitely um, one of the catchiest on the album. I really like the opener of The Cure because it um, kind of reminded me of the second song from their uh, first and so far only post-hiatus album, A Dotted Line, um, the track Destination, which I think that I've established at this point I really love songs about growth and change and moving on. And that's what Destination is about, and that's what I kind of thought... The Cure was about, or maybe that's more like learning how to settle down and appreciate your surroundings and do the best with what you have. And then when what you have is as much talent as these musicians, then, you know, you've got a lot to you know be satisfied with. There's a base level of consistency here, which is really strong. I'd say it's one of those albums where all of the songs are good. The first album uh, the Watkins family ever did was all covers. This is mostly original stuff, right? As far as I'm aware, there's one um, kind of country folk standard and then one uh, cover that you pointed out is a Warren's Even song. Yeah, and it's just cover of Accidentally Like a Martyr, which is track five from his album Excitable Boy, just after Werewolves of London in the track list. Excellent cover. I think it's got one of Sarah's most achingly beautiful vocals in particular on the whole album. I love the minimal intro to it. It's really stoic and uh, minimalist. Just a really excellent cover. They really make it their own. They really know how to cover stuff if they made the whole first album like covers, obviously. So this is maybe, I wouldn't say maybe a leftover from that, but it's definitely a holdover in the same style. Maybe they were didn't have enough tracks, but they're like, we know how to cover stuff, so we're going to do that. And the last track, Keep It Clean, was a, is another cover. I like this song a lot. It's a different changes pace because a lot of these songs like Lafayette are you know really slow beautiful burners that really tug at your emotional strings keep it clean's more of a fast-paced rollicking rock and roll tinged 50s retro number like we keep going on about 80s nostalgia 50s nostalgia is underrated and this is a really unexpected end for the album for me I was totally expecting another, you know, slow song, another sort of ballady type track, but I really thought this was a really fun song. And they say it at the end. Does don't they say at the end that was fun? Yeah. I mean that's like all we can say, that was fun. <laughs> yep. You know, keep saying this and a lot of stuff, but I just love it when uh you can tell the artists are in sync and enjoying their time together. Yeah. And this also features guest vocals from John C. Riley. Yep, um, it's got a few other people on it. Um, he's like the one that like people would know. There's also a Guatemalan singer, Gabby Moreno, and um, one David Garza. Tragically, I've never heard of, so can't really comment on that. And then there is one other song on the album that is a cover. Which one? The second track, Neighborhood Name, is off a uh, duet album by uh, Taylor Ashton and Courtney Hartman. Um, Hartman is apparently the former guitarist for a band called Della May, and I can't really find too much info on Taylor Ashton. Well, that's cool that they're going from far-ranging influences of people to cover stuff from. Yeah. I didn't really pick up on that sounding any different from the other songs that they had written, but that's kind of cool. Yeah. And then one other... Just little thing, just little fact of potential interest is that the album, if if not the entire album, then at least a number of the songs were produced by Mike Viola, who was also the producer on um, Silver Landings, which we reviewed last month, and which Sarah Watkins featured on. So yeah, so I feel like there's a sort of maybe not community, but there's definitely a framework of musician connections there. Mike Viola is definitely a really good current producer then, producing Silver Landings and this. And probably a lot more that I may have heard, but I'm not aware of currently. He did a really good job here. 
Yep, like he's worked with uh, Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness, uh, Jenny Lewis, lots of great people. So. Yeah, lots of great artists there. Yeah, the productions here are really open, really warm, really spacious. He gives uh, Sean and Sarah a lot of space to breathe and you know perform to the best of their abilities, which is very high. He does a really good job here producing them. Yeah, and that's... Um, one of the remarkable things about Nickel Creek's albums, and I'm sure a lot of their side projects and solo work, that kind of production is pretty common, especially on their self-titled, um, which, like, that's one of my favorite things about that album that was produced by Alison Krauss, who, I don't know if you remember, we reviewed her back in the early days. Yeah, yeah, sure, she's a good artist. Yeah, so it's just, like, remarkable that they're able to keep up such a consistent level of you know, quality and style, no matter who they're working with. Yeah, for sure. So I think we've probably talked this one to death, so are we ready to give it ratings, Alex? Yeah, I had a very small cursory but positive knowledge of Nickel Creek, and this seems like a very good uh, sort of side project from two of the three members. All of the aspects I like from the songs I've heard are still here, stronger than ever or as ever before. The songs are very enjoyable, very well-performed, and just beautiful stuff. Can't find really much fault with this. It's not exactly in the wheelhouse of music that I'm very acquainted with, but I'm happy to try a lot more out after hearing this. I'm going to give it a cool 7 out of 10. All right, and I am embarrassingly biased. As I've said through this whole thing, I just love seeking out anything that you know these musicians um produce and you know just i'm just so excited to you know have more of their music in my life this year this album did not disappoint in the slightest it might not live up to the uh absolute heights of their of nickel creek self-titled which is one of my favorite albums of all time i believe i forgot to mention that earlier um but you know i don't expect everything to be a masterpiece i just want to hear great musicians enjoying their time together writing good material and you know just like imagining the you know dream of seeing them perform this in concert like it's it's a whole weird thing so like like i said i am ridiculously biased but they're just great all around and so i'm comfortable giving this one an 8 out of 10 there's nothing wrong with knowing what you like man gotta be honest about my taste so All right, so that wraps it up for Brother Sister by the Watkins Family Hour. Thanks for tuning in to Busted Speakers, everybody. Uh, You can follow us on Twitter at underscore Busted Speakers. You can follow me on Twitter at SubProspector. If you like this video, leave us a like. And if you want to see more of our album reviews, you can subscribe. And we will see you all next time. Bye. Bye. That was fun.